Hello. In this episode, we are going to go through a really interesting problem. What if we need to have uh, a lot of different checkboxes in the same uh, model? Well, we wouldn't want to really add a lot of Boolean uh, fields into our database. We could just keep it all inside one uh, column and have an array of uh, different checkboxes. So that's what we're going to go through. We're going to add an array of checkboxes. Now here in the draft application, we have a model of posts and we can create a post with a title and some kind of content. And we're going to add a few checkboxes. Well, for example, the checkboxes can be different GDPR uh, agreements or tags or uh, whatever. So let's try to add some checkboxes. Now, first of all, we're going to run a migration. Let's say Rails generate migration, add the uh, tags to posts. And the tags, oh, the, yeah, the tags are going to be uh, a text field. Okay. Now let's go to DB, migrate. And they're also going to say that it is going to be an array. So array true. And by default, it is going to be uh, just uh, square braces. So just the sign of uh, this being an array. Okay, let's run the migration, Rails DB migrate. And uh, what would be next? Let's try to play with this array. So if we go to our schema, uh, let's reload. We can see that our posts have uh, a text field uh, with tags that is an array and that has uh, uh, square braces uh, by default. Let's play around with it. Let's go in and say post.count, no posts. Oh, actually we do have one post. Let's say post.first. And here it is and it has an empty array of tags. So let's say post.first.tags. And run any tags. Let's add the a tag. Let's say uh, post equals post.first post.tags, and let's add some tags. Now, there are a few different ways to add tags. We can say like this, so it's uh, an array function. So we would be adding a tag named, for example, Ruby. Okay, let's say post.tags, and we have Ruby. And let's say post.save, exclamation mark, to actually persist these changes. You see, it has been added. So again, we have post tags and it says Ruby. Now there are actually a few ways to add the uh, values to an array. We can say either this uh, thing, or we can say post.tags.push and we would add something like rails. Okay, and let's say post.save. And uh, now the post has two different tags. Okay, let's add one more tag with another way, let's say, Post dot uh, tags plus equals, uh, let's say, uh, Ruby on Rails. Okay, no implicit. Yeah, we should actually put this in square braces in this case. And let's say post dot save. So there are three, uh, there's a basically three ways of adding uh, a value into an array. And now let's actually check if this uh, post has a specific uh, uh, value in this array. Let's say post uh, dot uh, tags dot include. And let's see if it includes something like full. No, it doesn't. Let's say if it includes Ruby. Yes, it does. Let's say if it, see if it includes just something like Ru. Uh, no, it doesn't. So you see, it looks for full uh, values. And this way we can look for a post that includes something. And now let's try some scopes. So let's say post dot uh, there, mm, tags, and where tags has something like Ruby. And it doesn't give us anything. Why doesn't it give us anything? Because we are looking for something really direct here. We are looking uh, not for a part of an array, but for a complete array. So if we looked for a post that contains uh, the whole array, like this, then you see we find this post. And to be able to find a post that doesn't uh, contain the whole array, but contains just something, we can write a slightly different where clause. We can say something like uh, tags and question mark, 
uh, and we would say something like Ruby. Uh, I didn't close the gaps and close this gap. Okay, let's try once again. So a pose that includes Ruby, close gap, and it works. Now let's try adding just one more post. For an example, I will say post.create title will be second and content will be second. And you see we've created one more post. And this post doesn't have any tags. Let's just add some kind of tags. Let's say p equals post.lost, p.tags, and we will add something like Ruby and p.save. And once again, let's look for all the posts that have the, the tag Ruby. Let's say post dot where tags contains Ruby. And we have two posts. And let's see the posts that contain Ruby and Rails. Oh, actually, it looks for all. So here we have, again, post dot count. We have both because one post contains uh, Ruby, the other contains Rails. So we can all use this all inside the, our uh, Rails application, not only in the console, of course. Now let's try to use it not in the console, but inside our application. So from the user side, let's start the server. And let's uh, have a look. So here we have a post, and we want to make it possible to see the tags. First of all, we'll see the existing tags that we have just added in the console. Let's go to our app views posts index let's try to display the tags so post dot tags okay so here we have ruby and here we have the other three tags let's try to create a new post without any tags and see what it shows us going back to posts you see it is an empty array and it doesn't look really friendly and human readable so we can do something different we can say post text dot two sentence and here you see we have plank here we have ruby and here we have coma coma and the last one so ruby on rails or we can uh, say something like post dot tags dot map and inside map, we would say something like tag and tag dot capitalize. And here we would have it slightly differently. So we have them capitalized and we can say some again, two sentence. You see, so we are just playing around with this uh, string here, or we can actually go through each of them. We can say post tags dot each do tag and display the tag. Let's see if it works. Well, yeah. So, okay, now we can display our tags and let's actually make it so that we can add new tags uh, from our views. So first of all, we'll go to our controllers and add tags as an array in our strong params. So I'm going to say tags equals an empty array. So now we've byte listed them and now let's see which tags are going to be available. So you see, in this case, uh, it is cool. It makes sense to use an uh, array inside the post table. If uh, we have a finite, so an, not an endless number of possibilities. So for example, in our application, there can be only three different tags or 15 different tags. And if we don't plan to add the, any new ones from the client side. So that's then it makes sense to... Uh, have these kind of checkboxes that we are going to add. So let's go to our posts uh, form, for example. And here we are going to add an array of checkboxes. So uh, first of all, we'll define the options, the tags that are going to be available in our application. Let's go to our post.rb and let's say tags equals, uh, uh, let's say, includes. Ruby, Rails, Ruby on Rails, JavaScript, Hotwire, and Stimulus. Okay, and let's uh, say something like uh, 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 post tags dot each do 
uh, key. So we're going to have them as uh, keys. Okay, now we'll have an end statement. And here we're going to, let's say, just display all the keys. Let's say equals form dot label uh, key. Let's see if the keys, so all the tags get displayed. And here are the tags. So we have the tags, and now we want to have a checkbox next to each of them. So we would say form dot checkbox uh, checkbox. And here we would have uh, the tags. And then we would say multiple uh, is true. And uh, let's see what it gives us. We would also say key and nil to make it work. Let's see. So we have all these tags and checkboxes. Let's see if it works. So uh, with checkboxes, and we'll say it will have Rails, Stimulus, and uh, that's it. I'll just say it in the content. And I will check box rails and stimulus. I press create post. Let's go to our posts. And yes, it has rails and stimulus. Kind of works. Let's go to edit. And you see none of the checkboxes are checked. So uh, if I update the post, what will change? Uh, nothing has changed. If I go back and just try to put Ruby, let's see if anything changes. Yeah, so it sets Ruby. So it is not kind of cool. You see the checkboxes that are actually selected are not checked. And to make them checked, we'll need to add uh, something additional here. So I will say checked. And the ones that are checked will be form.object.tags. And if there are any, include a key to s. OK. And now it will try to find any tags that are already checked and check them. Let's see if it works. Yes, it seems to work. So let's go to another post. I'm going to the post that we have three different tags in. So here we have three tags. It works. I will add Hotfire and JavaScript. Let's see if it gets updated and works. So you see, now we can actually have an array of checkboxes and it looks really cool. And uh, now it can be used not only for tags, it can be used for uh, a lot of different things like GDPR stuff or uh, different things that characterize your uh, model. And it's really cool that you don't have to add the, an additional complexity with adding a new database table and making relationships like uh, a post has many tags or many G GDPR booleans, whatever, and you don't have to have a lot of booleans uh, inside your uh, post. So it's a great way to leverage uh, arrays inside your Ruby on Rails application. And you see, it's really easy. All we've done is we've done this uh, migration. So tags that are text, tags because it can be quite long, uh, array, default square braces. Then we went to our uh, posts and said that we are whitelisting tags as an array. In the form, we've done these uh, uh, checkboxes for each tag. And in the post, we've said which tags are available. And that's basically it. So thanks for being with me and uh, have fun learning.